everyone. Welcome to your author series at the library. Your author series brings authors and illustrators to you via the Los Angeles Public Library. Today, our program will be at 4 p.m. right now, but throughout the fall season, your author series will happen at 4 p.m. on different Fridays during the fall season. It's Friday afternoon, so I'm trying my best. <laughs> my name is Lauren from the Studio City branch. And my name is Anita Kelly. I'm the children's librarian at the San Pedro branch. And we wanna thank the Library Foundation with support from the Lenore S. and Bernard A. Greenberg Fund for making today's program possible. And we are so excited. It's our pleasure to introduce today's Your Author guest, illustrator and author, Kay Fiesel. Hi. Welcome, Kay Fai. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> author and illustrator, Kay Fiesel, <laughs> a lot of wonderful books. Noodle Fins, illustrated by Kay Fai. Look at that elephant trunk. It looks like a noodle. I love how you do that, Kathy. <laughs> also the illustrator of Old McDonald's Had a Baby. And the sequel of Noodle Fins, Old, Old Copy Tale, just came out this month. Mm -hmm. But today, Kathy is going to present her book that she was the author and illustrator, A Normal Pig. Thank you, Kay-Fi. That was such a reveal. I wasn't expecting you to have all of the books in front of you like that. It's really exciting. I love all of your books. You <laughs> add so much humor to your illustrations. Thanks. I feel like I've had so much support from LAPL. I feel like every book that I've made has been, like I've gone either in person to the Studio City branch and presented it or I've been invited on like Instagram to do something. So it's, it's I've, I've really felt the love and support from you all. And now here we are. And I'm so glad you're here. And I'm sure everyone at home that is watching is really happy that you're here. K5 Steel is going to present and read aloud a normal pig and my favorite part, a drawing demonstration. Oh yeah, so get something to draw with. Like your favorite thing to write and draw with. Do you either, do both of you have something to draw with? Because I do. I have okay. a pencil and a pad. And I just want to remind everyone that we will have a question and answer after um, K5's presentation. So make sure you think of your questions and write them in the chat. Cool. Excellent. So um, are we, am I doing the reading now? Is that what we want to do? Well, well, we were kind of. What do you want to do? It would be kind of interesting to see a little studio tour. Oh yeah, yeah, that's really great. Okay, so um, I should start off by saying that the studio that I usually worked in, that I made A Normal Pagan and Noodle Fint and all the other books that Lauren just held up, it is um, a lot closer to, San to LA than I am now. <laughs> so I used to live in San Francisco and I would go down to LA all the time. I have a lot of friends there. I have some family there. And then I ended up moving and I moved about a month ago and I moved all the way around the world to a country called Switzerland. And I live in a town called Lausanne. And if you've ever read a book that's um, by Richard Scarry, like Busy Town, oh, I go busy town is the place but it's like cars and trucks and things that go mm -hmm. or um what are some like what do people do all day he also lived in this city that i live in so i feel like i'm like kind of absorbing this idea of like a busy town with all these animal characters and it just feels very fitting that i'm bringing my creative practice to this place and i'm very interested in seeing how it's going to feed um uh, the books that i make um anyway so that's all to say that my studio, I had to, I moved here in basically two suitcases. So I really had to like take the bare minimum of what I have. But what I think is really cool about that is that I'm gonna show you what does the bare minimum of, it, of an artist studio look like and what is like creative practice look like at its most essential elements. 
And what I think is very interesting about that is that I probably use the exact same materials that you use in school or at home. And that is things like, I have a ton of pencils that I brought with me. I brought my favorite pencils. I also use uh, watercolor paper. So, I mean, I use printer paper also to just draw on. Um, and I use watercolor. So basically everything that I show you, you probably have at home. And these are also the same things that I made these books with too. So I'll demonstrate some of that stuff to you also. But uh, I'm gonna take my, I have my phone here. I'm gonna take it off and you're gonna see my palm. <laughs> I'm gonna try to not get in the way of my, um, doo -doo. I'm gonna change that to my back camera. Okay. So you can see this now, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So I think what is going to be, well, okay. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff to show you. I'm not really sure where to begin. This is actually really interesting. So when I mentioned that I use watercolors, what I will do for each book that I illustrate, I have a different palette that I use. Okay, so this is the one that I used for a normal pig. This is the one that I used for um, Noodlefint. And this is the one that I used for Old MacDonald Had a Baby. And so what I do is I have these different tubes of watercolor paint that I'll squeeze out into all of these different um, containers, basically. And that way, if I ever have to make more art for the book, or if I ever just want to go back and be like, what colors did I use for that book? I kind of have it like ready to go. And then I'll just, throw, I have like a big envelope that I keep some of these in and I can just kind of stack them up and move them. This is another uh, watercolor palette that I use. And um, because it has a lid on it, I can kind of take it with me wherever I go. So that was really important for traveling. Um, I also use brushes like you probably use. So these are just a couple of ones that I use. And I have like a thing of watercolor paper and a um, paper towel that I use. Like I said, like pens and pencils and things like that. And then I also use this thing, this light box. So do you want me to show you a little quick thing about my process? Oh yes, please. Okay, cool. So. I can show you some stuff for a book that I was working on before I left. So when I'm coming up with an idea for a story, this is kind of what it looks like. <laughs> it's a lot of post-its and sketches and things like that. But in the very, very beginning, it's usually kind of something like this when I'm figuring out how a story looks. So I have a little thing of post-its and I kind of write out what I want the story to be and so this is a story about a girl who's also a musician. So I grew up, I played a lot of music when I was growing up and I actually played the xylophone when I was a kid. <laughs> but um, it's a girl who wants a lot of attention and she thinks that the best way to get attention from this teacher that she loves, this music teacher, is to play the drums. So she's thinking about that. But then things don't really turn out as great as she thought they would be because instead of soloing, she's just kind of keeping the beat. That's like the gist of the story. Um, so this is kind of what like the manuscript looks like and all of that. But then I take each individual one and I turn them into these, which are pencils. And I, you can see like some other edits that I make as I go along. But basically I'm just using, you know, pencil, pens and paper and post-its, you know, to make these yeah. stories. And then the stories turn into a real book or, you know, a real book after a while. So. I have each page, each one of those post-its turns into one of these pieces of paper. And then I enlarge that, I'll print it out onto, and this is actually a different book right here. I'll print it out onto a bigger piece of paper and I'll put it on this light table. And when you turn it on, you can, do, 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 do. I'm trying to do this all with one hand. You can put another piece of watercolor paper on top of that, and then I'll just lightly pencil over the original drawing. So I only really have to draw it once, but when you make final art, it has to be around the same size as the actual book, because you don't want it to be smaller, because you don't get as much detail. So this one's a little smaller than a normal pig, for example. And then after I've penciled it, 
I'll turn it off. And then you can kind of see it's just very, very light pencil drawings. Then I'll go in with my watercolors and I'll watercolor the book. And then, and then it's done basically. Um, I might have to do some edits, but then I like send it off to my editor. I don't have any final art here with me. I send it all off before I left. But um, but I can show some I can show some pictures of it afterwards. But yeah, that's my process. And then another big thing that I do is I keep sketchbooks. So I always this is something that I travel with, um, and it's really important to me. And you know, if I lost one, I would be kind of heartbroken. But it's just you know a cover that I reuse, <laughs> and um, then I just keep a ton of drawings in here, and it's just things that I see or things that I notice. I don't really share this with a lot of people, so you're getting kind of like a sneak peek. But um, I also work on story ideas. You can see these post-its again. This is actually an idea that maybe I should add. Look at this, a roach class pet. But I'm just like, <laughs> you know, it's like all of these ideas that I have that I just want to keep. But I, you know, it's so it's important for me when I write these things down to revisit them. Oh, this is like a bunch of kids in a classroom that I was trying to think of. Um, yeah, um, look at this. Here's another thing, this county pickle eating contest. <laughs> it's her competing against a bunch of adults. But um, oh, yeah, wow. I don't know. I, I have a lot of fun in my sketchbook. And I think this is really the place where when you're making books, and especially when you're making books as your job, um, it can be, I mean, it's so much fun, but when you're just working on deadlines all the time, it's really hard to take time out of your day to just enjoy it for what it is. Does that make sense? Like sometimes it can just be like, oh, I have to get this deadline done because if I don't get it done in time, my editor is going to be, you know, it'll run up against all these other problems and then like the, it won't be able to get produced in time. So it's really important to me um, to just have fun as much as I can. And it's hard, it's really weird to think about that. Like it's important to remember to have fun, but sometimes, you know, it's just a lot of pressure in making a book. So I try to keep myself loose by having a place like this that I know is just for me. And that's just a place that I play in. Um, and Lynn, there's a, a, a cartoonist, her name is Linda Berry. And she talks about a sketchbook. In, are you familiar with her stuff, with her comics? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So she talks about your sketchbook as a place to go to and a place to spend time in uh, as opposed to an object. And I love that idea because it's kind of like a book. You know, if you think about a book as a place that you can go and kind of escape the world in, I think about mm -hmm. my sketchbook as being that kind of place too. Yeah. Um. I don't know if there's anything else I can show you. I have this giant, when we moved to this place, I had like a giant, this amazing um, cabinet. <laughs> so I, I started keeping everything in here. And I guess this is kind of cool. I, I just keep all of my brushes in here. And then I have a bunch of paper in here too. And um, yeah, it's just like all the junk that I was able to fit in my suitcase. and and bring with me. But I think the exciting thing is, you know, having all these brushes that I can play with. And yeah, <laughs> I just keep it closed. But yeah. Um, so what do you think that um, you've seen this? So uh, I think that's amazing. And I just want to say before you get started and before Lauren has anything to say that last year at my library, we had a weird contest day and we actually had a pickle eating contest for the kids. Stop, you did so not. seeing you, yes, yes. So seeing that you did that, I'm like, yes, that is so amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember as a kid, I was, that's not a, is that a weird thing for kids to be into pickles? Like I remember as a kid being like, I'm don't really, like yeah, yeah. I love pickles. I, <laughs> I know lots of children that love pickles. Yeah, I remember once getting like we had cats growing up, and I remember for some reason we had gotten like a box of cat food that had a pickle scented marker in it, <laughs> and it was like my favorite thing. <laughs> but I was like thinking back at that, I'm like, why is what was that in a cat food container? Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. 
K5, as I don't know if you just saw the comment below, but someone is very thankful that you shared your workspace with us. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, when you're making books, you spend so much time by yourself that it's hard to remember that you're going to be sharing your book with kids and sharing your book with kids and with other adults is, um, I mean, it's just a different part of the process of making books. And it's something that I, once I do it, I'm like, oh, right. This is like the best, especially when, and this is something that I felt like pretty sad about over this past year um, with like coronavirus and being in shelter in place is that I realized how much I miss sharing my book and my process. And like, there's just really nothing that compares with like giving a, sharing a book with a kid or reading a book with a kid or just like, that like joy of like reading alongside someone. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Kfi, are you ready to present oh, yeah. your book, A Normal Pig? So mm -hmm. Kfi is going to read aloud, A Normal Pig. She's, uh, she's the author and the illustrator. Mm -hmm. And my favorite illustration of this book is definitely all the different jobs Oh yeah, that one's a good one. And I love the brain surgeon one right in the middle of the tree. That's my favorite. <laughs> that is my favorite illustration my of the whole book. <laughs> my favorite is when they got to the city. Oh yes, and they're in the museum and, and she sees everyone looking different. Yes, K5, take it away please. K5, can you hear me? We can't hear you. So everyone, for those technical difficulties, K5 Steele is working on her sound. So we're going to make sure that we have the sounds on for you all to enjoy K5 Steele's A Normal Pig and her drawing demonstration. So thank you for your patience with these technical difficulties. In the meantime, in the comments, if you have any questions that you may have for K5, you can start typing uh, them wait, in right okay, now. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, okay, good. All right. <laughs> You're like, I've noticed that we can't hear you. Yes. And okay. <laughs> All right, so I just put in headphones. I think this should be fine. Now, if you can't um if you can't hear me, just let me know and you know, we'll just pop in and out. This is just like part of doing this whole like, you know, being on the internet thing and me not being able to be in front of you all. Oh, one thing that's kind of cool that I got to do with this book is I got to make the actual book itself a little different. So if take off this thing which is like the jacket of the book this is our main character and there she is over here and then if you flip the book over on the back you can see her back and her little, little pigtail and she's kind of like kicking one leg up or like tapping it up and down so yeah let's check this book out so it is called a normal pig and sometimes i'll ask some students when i'm sharing this like what do you notice on this page what does this look like? And I wanted this, I mean, it looks like maybe here's like her as a baby and maybe there are some tickets 
And is that a school photo perhaps? Okay, so let's start this off. Pip was a normal pig who did normal stuff. And there she is, hamming it up on the playground. She liked making art, cooking with her family. Maybe you've cooked with these kinds of things before. And thinking about what she wanted to be when she grew up. So this is what Lauren mentioned is one of her favorite spreads. Um, maybe if you notice any jobs here, what are some jobs that you notice over here? I'll give everyone a couple seconds. You can just say it out loud. Um, my favorite job on here, and I think Lauren, you mentioned it too, was this one over here, the brain surgeon. And someone had mentioned to me, like, was a, I think it was a first grader had said to me, like, maybe that's not a brain surgeon you want to go to because, you know, she's like taking your brain out and you want a brain surgeon who's going to keep your brain in. Um, anyway, what else do we have here? We have a fortune teller, an astronaut, news reporter, a writer. She wants to be everything, which I'm sure many of you feel the same way. You still want to be everything. Then one day, a new pig came to school, and this pig says, Ew, what are you eating? Pointing at her lunch right there. It stinks. Well, look at her face. Pip didn't know how to respond. It was just her normal lunch. Um, so keep in mind that lunch right there, because we'll come back to that. A lot of people have questions about what she's actually eating there. I'm curious what you think. The new pig was in Pip's art class too. And this new pig says, weren't we supposed to draw houses? And if you look at her drawing, her drawing looks a little different from everyone else's. Um, one thing that I also like to point out here is, I don't know if you ever had to take an art class, like a painting class, you had to wear these kind of old shirts backwards. This one pig is buttoned up all the way. I don't know how that pig is gonna get out of that shirt. We'll see. We never find out. So um, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then here we have band practice. Pip hadn't changed, but she started to feel different. And her band teacher is asking her, is that your babysitter over there? And Pip says, that's my mom. So here she is. Where do you think she is right now? What does it look like? She's on a bus ride home. And there are no words on this page, but there are no words. But if you look at all of these pigs' expressions, how do you think they feel right now? What are they doing? Looks like they're hanging out. This pig is sitting the wrong way on the school bus, but everyone does that anyway, right? Using like a fortune teller. But how does Pip look in comparison with all of these pigs? When her parents asked her what was wrong, she replied, why can't you make me a normal lunch? How do you think she's feeling right now? What are some words you might use to describe this emotion? I think it's a couple of different emotions if you look at it. And maybe you felt those couple of emotions at one time or another, I definitely have. On Saturday, Pip's mother had an idea why don't we take a trip to the city as a family? There's her, uh, she's like a baby piglet brother. Pip had never been there before. I don't know if any of you have ever taken the subway before, but if you look at this, it's like a bus that says come to the subway station. It looks like you take it all the way down, buy your ticket over there or at the kiosk. Many of you have probably done this before you go through. And then you get on the train. It looks like they're running to get on the train. Everyone wants to get on the train before it leaves the station, right? And now where do you think they are? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. There are, looks like these things hanging on the wall that are really colorful and it doesn't look like there's really anything for sale maybe. Where do you go where there's just a bunch of art hanging on the walls? I think I just gave it away. They're at an art museum. <laughs> and Pip's heard so many languages there. And I'm gonna read some of these languages to you. 
But maybe there are some languages on here, if you look closely, you know, or you could read. Okay, I'm gonna read this one over here because I think I'm just guessing there isn't a very big Icelandic population in LA. Um, and my friend Bjargi, who's Icelandic, gave me this translation and it goes, um, and this other pig saying, Yow, which me in this translates to, do you want to get a coffee? And this pig's like, yeah. Okay, let's do another one. Um, so this pig over here is saying, wow, das ist ja riesig hier. And that's my friend Engen who gave me this translation. It's wow, it's huge in here. Uh, there's a pig up here saying, um, oh my gosh, I'm completely blanking on how to say it in Japanese. Um, <laughs> uh, but it translates to, these heights are suddenly making me need to pee. If anyone speaks Japanese, I would love to hear you write out how I would say that because I am completely blanking on it right now. Anyway, my friend Erica, who um, grew up in Tokyo, gave that translation to me. Uh, and then this one my mom gave to me, it's in Cantonese, it's written in Chinese, and it says, Yao Mo Jai Zai Zi Kao, and it means, is there a senior citizen discount? Which is absolutely something that my mother would say and ask for. And then there's a pig over here that's looking at the art and saying in English, I don't get it. Which uh, you hear a lot at uh, museums too. So now where is she? She's at the playground. At the playground, all of the pigs look so different. They look, they, they all do look really different. The playground also looks really fun. And when I was drawing this playground, I wanted to draw a playground that I wanted to play in. And this is actually based on a playground that I saw when I was in Singapore. And maybe some of you have eaten out of a out of a at a place like this. Um, it's a food truck, and it looks like here's Kumiga Pip. There's her parents and her little brother, and she goes up to the food truck. Even the food was different. And she goes up to this pig and says, is there anything on the menu that's not so weird? And the pig says to her, maybe it's weird for you, but not for me. I like it. And then what's happening over there? Yeah, it looks like Pip is going to try that new food. And I like this moment right here. I think that there's something about her um, kind of mimicking the bully. And then she realizes, oh, I don't have to be like that. And then she gets to try this food. And we don't ever find out if she likes it or not. But uh, regardless of what happens, when they got home, Pip was feeling better. And her dad asks, do you want me to make you a normal lunch? Do you know what this food is? I feel like this is a very normal American meal, or American lunch, you know, or stereotype, but a normal American lunch. Um, and Pip says, no, thanks. I'll bring what I always eat. You look and she's playing with different art supplies. So maybe she saw this stuff at the museum and she got inspired. On Monday, Pip sat at her usual table in the cafeteria. There she is. And look who's back. This it's the same pig who says, Ew, she's back with her weird lunch. Trying to get as much mileage as possible out of that joke. And Pip says, Maybe it's weird for you but not for me. I like my lunch. Do you want to try it? And her friends all jump in and they say it's good. Do you want to trade? Mm, you should try it. And how, how do you think this pig is feeling who just made fun of Pip? Pip's like ugh I'm out of here. And weirdly enough by recess Pip felt pretty normal again and here she is. And life goes on in the pig school. <laughs> That's it. That's the book. Hey, thanks for reading along with me. K5, that was great. I love I love how Pip took her experience from the museum cafeteria and and just went with it, remembered what the other child had said mm -hmm. to her and use it on, on her classmate. Well, I think back the other thing really seemed to like give her the confidence, that. right? 
in um, sticking up for herself. And right. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Keith, are you ready for that. the drawing demonstration? Let's, okay, let's so do it. There are a couple of things that I do, there are a couple of ways that I approach drawing. And can you let me know like, if I'm like, am I cutting out? Is this good? Is this fine? Okay, good. Looks um, good. So there are a couple of ways that I realize that I draw. And I think that no way is better than another way but they're just like different approaches. So I can show you both ways and I can show you the one that I think is a little faster and easier first. So you have something to draw with, right? So um, draw a circle. It can be kind of any size circle. I, mine just looks kind of small, I think on this page right over here. And then put a dot somewhere in that circle. Okay, now draw another circle next to it. And you're gonna do the same thing and put a dot right in the middle of there. What do you think we have now? Eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have his eyes. And it's just that easy. It's just a circle with a dot in the middle. So now we're gonna draw her. What is that called on a pig? That thing that's like her her nose, but it's not a nose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, you both know it is it's this snout. So I, I think it's kind of shaped like a dumpling. Some people say it's shaped like an onion, but it's just kind of like a half circle and then it goes up to a little point in the middle. Can you see that? It does so look like a dumpling. Or like a Hershey kiss or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to draw like a little thing like pointing up in the middle. And then just do two dots that are a little longer like that. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to give her her ears. Actually, I'm gonna put this underneath here so you can see it a little better. So the way that I draw her ears are, actually you can see, just see it right over here. Oh, one other thing I should, oh no, I'll talk about that later. Um, so her ears are kind of like cat ears, but I make them a little rounder, kind of like the dumpling shape. Does that make sense? So they're like kind of triangles, but I like to like give them like a little curve to them. But if you are feeling a little nervous about it, I would also just recommend that you give her cat ears because pig ears are kind of <laughs> like cat ears. And then just draw a line between the two of them to connect them. Okay, now her body is, if you look at this, she's basically like all a giant bean. She's just like a big bean. And so what I do is I just start on one side and you can make this like a bean shape, right? And just connect one ear to the other ear, just like that. Okay, now here's something that's really fun. And I feel like this is like the easy and fun part is doing her arms and legs. Now, I know a lot of people who will do like stick figures or stick characters. And I just think that they don't really have a ton of life to them. But what I do is I just draw four squiggly lines. And they can kind of squiggle in whatever way you want. But I like it because, I mean, you can make them really squiggly. You can make them like minimally squiggly. But it's just to like, get some motion in there, right? And then what you're going to do is, wait, do you all have your squiggles? Okay, I'm see. Okay, um, just double those lines. Okay. And now she has uh, hooves at the end of the <laughs> hoofs, hooves <laughs> at, the, at the end of her hands and feet. And they're just like either an M shape or a W shape. So, or sometimes they're like, you know, a sideways M shape, but whatever way you have it, you just basically want to connect those lines with either an M or a W. I'm just gonna do, and this is kind of like, kind of a Z, I guess. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got this like really wiggly and wild pig right now. Um, I think that, the, but she's kind of like, doesn't have an expression. So what kind of expression or what emotion do you think she might be feeling just by looking at her? What would you, what would you say or what, we could, because she's a blank slate right now. We could give her any emotion. 
is there an emotion that you would like to see? Because this is kind of like a magic um, that you'd like to see Pip have here. What are you thinking? She looks like she just got caught doing something. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's a really good call. Like maybe she accidentally opened a door that said staff only or something like that. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm, so she's kind of surprised. So I'm going to just draw, draw her mouth like this. So I just did kind of like a little bit of a bean shape like that. But if I wanted to, and then let's do her, like maybe I'm going to give her some eyebrows too. She doesn't, she doesn't really have eyebrows in the book, but I think that that can like really emphasize. I'm just, I think eyebrows are very powerful, eyebrows and mouths. Um, but if I wanted to do something like, I'm just going to do another thing just for the sake of an example over here. We just have kind of like a blank pig face over here. If we wanted to make her like overjoyed, I might just go like this, right? And just make a giant mouth where she's like, mm. just like so excited. So it's just a matter of just changing the mouth. And you can do any kinds of shapes of mouth. But I really like what you said about her, like reading her body language and being able to determine her emotional state from that. What I like about that too is like when I start drawing this pig, I don't know really who's going to show up, like, or what mood she's going to be in when she shows up. <laughs> so, so I kind of like that we just left it open for that. Okay, so then we have one final thing that's her spots. So she's got one spot kind of right in the middle of her forehead on her right ear, which is the one, the left one that you see. You put like half a spot because it kind of like goes over the top of her ear. She's got a spot on both of her cheeks at the edge again. She's got one right below her chin, one right on her belly button, and then one on the left and one on the right. So actually when I was making this book, I had to make a map of where her spots were. So she would look <laughs> the same every time. And then we also wanna, just like the final thing that we wanna add is like her little curly tail. Just like that. It is just like a little like curl. Can I see your drawings? <laughs> I knew you were gonna ask, K Fi. I knew you were gonna ask. Luckily well, it's, so it's October and it's Halloween, so mine looks more like um uh, a little monster. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so luckily <laughs> it's it's October, everyone. It's kind of half pig, half monster. <laughs> Good. I need to show yours. Here's mine. I can't. There we go. I love I it. It's so like. good. <laughs> yeah. Your pip is like, what do you <laughs> want from me? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> um. So one other thing I wanted to point out. So this book is a very specific size, and it's eight and a half by eleven. So I made it this size because this isn't like a standard American sheet of paper, but your typical piece of printer paper you get is eight and a half by 11. And what I wanted to be able to do is I, I like the idea of kids being able or anyone being able to trace anything that's on the book. And if you look really closely, you can see it. And so you can, um, yeah, you can kind of see through each of these pages. So I wanted, to be able to um, yeah trace it because that's the way that I actually learned how to draw was I would go to my library and I would get out books that I liked or comic books or things like that. I actually did it with Garfield a lot and I would just trace the pages until I got confident enough drawing it where I could kind of just draw it on my own. And as I was doing this, I was like, you know, I could probably just like um, trace the pig that's on the cover so yeah when you get a copy from your library feel free to trace it i give you my permission to trace my drawings and copy everything that i do <laughs> uh should i flip my camera should we ask answer yes. some questions yes, please k5 cool. this will be a good time everyone watching from home if you have a question for k5 please type it in the chat right now thank you no and so maybe to get us started, um, I have a question. Tell me when you're ready, K-5.
<laughs> I'm sorry, Kate, but we can't hear you. Well, while we're waiting, I have my library card, which just fall, fell on the floor, but behind me, Los Angeles <laughs> Public Library. So please, if you want to check out Kate Fi's A Normal Pig with your okay. library card. Can you Kate hear Fi, me Yes, I can, okay. and I'm plugging your book. <laughs> you can use your library card to check out A Normal Pig with our library to go service, where you can do contact free pickup appointments website right there and library to go please enjoy cape ice book from home thank you and it looks like we have a couple of questions do you do you want to start no, yes. Anita, don't you have a question yeah oh yes okay so my question um the, the first question i have is were you that kid in art class who didn't follow directions Oh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I was so, um, I, so, you know, I'm sure both of you have your favorite teacher that you had growing up. My favorite teacher was Mrs. Rawson and she was my third grade art teacher. And she was just one of those teachers, this like woman who was like, just like, you know, like basically like a goddess, right? She's like, <laughs> and I wanted to do anything just to like please her or to, um but kind of hang out with her i just thought she was so cool and i think that i didn't i just wanted to be around her all the time so i think i just followed the rules all the time but i would definitely do things to try to impress her because <laughs> or get her attention or whatever because when you had her attention it was like the best thing in the world um so i would say that like, probably i did but i also wanted to like kind of show off in art class probably hopefully i wasn't like that insufferable i don't know Maybe I was. <laughs> Kate, are you ready for some questions from the audience? Sure. So Andy asked, hi, Andy. Andy asks, what is the marker you are using? Oh, OK. So I actually just got this. Um, since I moved here, I don't. I only brought a few different pens with me. But this is, I like this pen because it's like, I don't know if you can see this, it is kind of like a thicker pen. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like, it's like a marker. Yeah, it's, but it's by, I guess it's by this German company called Stabilo. And I let Stabilo, Stabilo, but I like it because it has like a nice thick line when you draw with it. And I like drawing with like a really dark line. I have some other pens that I really like a lot. This one, I actually, no, it's this one I have. This is the pen that I use to draw a normal pig with. And this one is a little different because it's actually a brush so that when I draw with it, I can get like a really inky line. And I like that a lot because you also can get like a very, very fine line too. So I just have a lot of variation, but I don't need to keep on dipping it back into ink and back and forth. So, um, and it's waterproof too. I love how you have such control with your lines. Just, just, I'm a just run those, those lines. I know, but still, I still like watching you do it. <laughs> and you, do you want to look in the chat for more questions? Yeah, I do. I see another question. Maria says, you used to draw cats. What happened to them? Oh, that's my aunt, actually. <laughs> I'm Maria. You know, I think I drew, so I when I was little, the first thing I said that I wanted to be when I grew up is I wanted to be a fish, I think. And then I wanted to be a cat. And then I wanted to work as a server in a restaurant. And I, did, I never achieved any of those things. I ended up doing more retail work, I guess. But um, I, I think I, I drew a lot, a lot of cats. Like my early drawings are just drawings of cats as people and I think it probably had to do something with like Richard Scary, right um but I think I just drew cats so much that I really got them out of my system and now I've moved on to like other animals and even humans too so <laughs> trying to expand my repertoire Kfi why did you choose a pig for your book a normal pig oh oh my gosh that's a really great question 
Um, so I think that there's kind of like a history of pigs, right, in children's literature. When you think about them, you know, there's um, uh, there's um, uh, like the pig from Charlotte's Web. There's uh, Olivia, obviously. There's who's the pig that likes buttered toast? What's her name? She's the one that I, I, it's, it's like another pig that you see. Like it, I'm totally blanking the name. Um, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm like throwing this question to you, to you two. Um, no, it sounds very libraries. familiar. And I'm sure you it get has. this question all the time. Like, I'm looking for this book. It's red. It has a pig. Like, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I feel like there are a few pigs, but I feel like for the most part, it's kind of like, I don't know. I always wanted to make a book about like a goat. That's like another animal that I would love to, because I feel like it's just kind of like underrepresented animals in in terms of animals in in books and i also there's something about her size like when you look at her mm -hmm. um i was kind of thinking about um do you know when when mickey mouse was developed by walt disney his proportions were supposed to be like that of a toddler and i was like i know i really like this idea of her being kind of like a bean and being easy to draw and also having like kind of front facing big eyes and I was like, what can I draw this like then? Like, well, I could draw a cat, I could draw a dog. And I was like, oh, I come see cats and dogs all the time. But I was like, I kind of like the idea of like making her a pig and putting her in like pig world. And what might that look like, right? Great. Um, I had a question too. Um, how old would you say Tip is or what grade do you think she's in? Yeah, you know, I, if you had asked me that two years ago, I would have said, I have no idea. I'm a youngest child. I'm one of the youngest people in my family. I don't know. Um, I, I, I like If I look at a kid, I'm like, I don't know. They're like eight. And the parent is like, they're two? <laughs> <laughs> I just like, but now I've had a ton of experience going into lots of classrooms. And I feel like she's maybe a, a first grader, maybe a second grader, something like that. She's pretty little, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Or maybe she's like very late in kindergarten, but I feel like I wanted her to be in a place where she has to deal with classroom dynamics for the first time. And um, I think there's something about this book and there's a moment, and I remember this moment as a kid too, when you realize that you're different from everyone else. I mean, obviously she goes through this moment of here and it's kind of like, she thinks in the beginning of the book, it's called a normal pig. And, um, she thinks that she's normal. Like every kid thinks that they're normal. Every every person thinks that they're normal when they grow up. And I also think every person goes through this this realization, and it maybe happens earlier for some people, later from other people. But like I'm different from everyone else. But in Pip's case, she's like I'm different, and she interprets that difference as a bad thing, right? Because it's just like she gets made fun of for her food. She gets made fun of for like the art that she makes that's different. Um, and then she gets made, like then she kind of like has like even a teacher say something to her like, oh, is that your babysitter over there? And she's like, that's my mom. And then she has this moment where she's riding home on the bus and she's just like, okay, my world is totally turned upside down now, right? And then um, it also can think it's kind of interesting. In, oh, I think this is also very important too that the way that she lashes out mm -hmm. at her parents afterwards at that moment, and do you notice she's drawing a, norm, a normal house in this drawing? Yeah. Um, it just felt, felt very real. And it was something that I definitely experienced as a kid too. Um, and it's like, you know, you take it out on, on people who don't maybe don't deserve it or, uh, but I, I think that there's something about, um, that I really like that I talked to another parent about, who really appreciated like oh i like this book also models how parents can show to their kid like when they're feeling different like well what can we do to make you feel better mm -hmm. about this and it's it's based on um, my own experience too of like going to a place i grew up in a town that was very not uh diverse it was very like very white town that was um kind of all of like the same like like lower middle class um but not a lot of diversity in my family. You know, like not only do we look different from everyone else, uh, you know, my name is Kate Pye. Like no one else said this name. Like when I was a kid, I just wanted my name so desperately to be like 
I, for some reason, Carol was the name that I really wanted. And I was like, that is just the most mature, like, lightest name. That is the name that I want. And, uh, but, you know, now I'm grateful that I have the name that I have. But, you know, I just, I just wanted to be, like, normal, right? I just wanted to fit in. And there just wasn't an option for me in this town because of my name and the way that I looked. And my brothers probably felt the same way. Um, but it wasn't until we started doing things like going to the city and meeting other people who looked like me and seeing other adults also that looked like me, that just looked um, like older versions of me that I was like, oh, so this was, it was very important. Um, I think it was really important for me. I still get kind of excited. Um, when I moved, cause I grew up in Massachusetts when I moved to California, uh, I remember my dad being with me, you know, this was like, like, you know, eight years ago or something like that. My dad, who's white, was like, hey, there are so many more people here that look like you. And, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that's right. Maybe that's why I feel kind of more comfortable here. <laughs> but, um, but I thought that that was interesting, you know, depending on where you are in the U.S., you could either be around people who kind of look like you, people who really don't look like you. Um, and you could feel very comfortable or very uncomfortable based in that situation. Right? Awesome. Yeah. If I, the butter toast, it's Francis. Thank yes. you, Michelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, <laughs> Michelle. no, is that, is, for Francis, is, the, is she a badger? No. Is she a pig? No, Francie. I, I don't know. Maybe but, I'm missing but, this up. But <laughs> Mrs. Crawford Quaff, Mrs. is one of my school librarian friends. So she, she would know. I trust, <laughs> I trust her that. And Michelle asks, are you writing, uh, are you working on a new book? Oh, yeah. So I have to share with you that one book. So it's uh, called All Eyes on Ozzy, the one about the girl who loves her music teacher. So that one is going to be coming out with HarperCollins next summer, next fall. Um, yeah, next October is when it's coming out. And it's all kids. So um, no more pigs right now. I think I'm just going to like think if there's a story about pigs. But this is a kid. And, you know, everything I do, I think everything I draw, most people, maybe this isn't true for most people, but everything I draw is, I, ha I have to have some sort of emotional resonance with it, mm -hmm. right? And it ends up, for better or for worse, being just like a touch autobiographical. And I think that, um, uh, yeah, this one is definitely just about, like, it's about attention. Yeah, it's about, like, how good it feels when you get attention and how, when it's taken away, it doesn't feel good, right? And how do you deal with that? Like not getting attention. Um, so I feel like it's kind of similar to if you read Lily's Plastic Purse or something like that. It's like a teacher that you love. Um, and it's actually based on, I got the idea uh, for um, for this. I was waiting for a, a school visit to start. And I was like, does anyone here know any good jokes? I love when kids tell jokes because they tell like the best jokes. And this one, and this, we started getting on knock knock jokes. And this one kid was like, knock knock. Who's there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pay attention to. Pay attention to who? Pay attention to me. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, oh my God, that's the most in incredible joke I've ever heard. Because it's like, that's like essentially what a joke is, right? That a kid would just be like, pay attention to me. And so I was like, oh, ooh, ooh, I really like that. And I was like, when I'm in a classroom, it's like all oh, these kids, that's what they want more than anything. It's like this person from the outside coming in and giving them just like a little bit of attention, right? Um, so that's kind of like the idea for the book is um, wanting attention, yeah. Oh, we look forward to it. I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> Let's just end with this last question from Andy. How did you get into illustrating? Oh, um, well, no, that's a really good question. That's a, I feel like that's a big question. So there's like the getting into illustration as a job thing, which is um, which is different, right? It's like more like businessy or whatever. But then there's that kind of like getting into illustrating where you're just drawing and trying to make your friends laugh and trying to make yourself laugh. It's kind of like, how did you get into writing or how did you get into reading? It's like, it was just something that I really enjoy doing. I mean, I think that um, having a sketchbook is kind of evidence of that. Like it was just some place that, you know, I always loved doodling with friends when I play games with my friends, it's usually drawing games. And it was just something that I really enjoyed doing and I, I would just draw all the time. And I, got really into, like, I, if I studied, like, art in college, 
and you know, a capital A art. It can feel a little weird to be like, I'm clearly drawing stuff for children and <laughs> being like having to be okay with that. Um, and uh, after a while, I was like, oh, what if I just try making a children's book and seeing if I could find like some success? Like maybe that's a way to have a job. And you know, it took like a lot mm -hmm. of years and a lot of luck, you know, and trying to learn from other people and just like, I'm spending a lot of time at the library actually now that I'm in Switzerland I, I haven't been to a library yet but you know these past like eight months and not having access to my library has been really really hard and I've just like you know I've been buying books and like oh my god books are so expensive <laughs> like I really especially for like picture books like I just really miss my library and um yeah, I, I, I just like spent so much time in the children's section of San Francisco Public Library. The uh, Free Library of Philadelphia is another one I've spent a ton of time in. And um, just trying to get to learn how to do picture books because they're very formulaic, not formulaic. They're like, they're all 32 or 40 pages in the US. And generally it's like, you know, like the pacing of the book as you read more, which I'm sure any parent here is like, yeah, I know picture books. I know when it's like, we're getting to the bedtime part, like we're getting to the, we're getting to the, thing, the part where things wrap up. Um, but yeah, and then I joined a couple of organizations, met an agent, and that's basically the very long and roundabout way. But um, yeah, I mean, I've been drawing for my entire life and I guess I just never stopped. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Bye. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun. We've really enjoyed this. <laughs> I'm excited to see what other drawings you do. <laughs> well, Laura, do you have anything to say before I close this out? Before Anita closes this out, don't forget all of Kate's books illustrated. Old McDonald had a baby. It's hilarious. That baby is something else. There's okay, there are so I, I love the humor. jokes in there. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I, I I noticed. Enjoy everyone. <laughs> and of course, a normal pig. And noodle fins. <laughs> that one's a real stick to your bones book. It's like 80 pages long. So parents beware. It's uh not exactly a bedtime story unless you have like 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, oh, everybody, you can get you. K Five books, library to go. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, K Five, for sharing your talent and your studio space with us, and for spending your time with us. And thanks again to the Library Foundation with support from the Lenore S. Um, and Bernard A. Greenberg Fund for making your author series possible. And there will be another your author series coming up on Friday, October 23rd, of course, at 4 p.m. because your author series is bringing the children's and young adult authors and illustrators to you at home. And the author will be Romina Garber. She's a teen science fiction author of the Zodiac Quartet and Labizona. So please join Friday, October 23rd at 4 p.m. for more your author series programming. And thank you to everyone that's watching right now. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you, Kate, bye. Thank you. Have a good day, have a good afternoon. Bye everyone, now you can go to bed. <laughs> <laughs>